Welcome back to Dev Tips. My name is Travis and we have an awesome show today. Today we have a one-on-one. -on -one. It's more of a it's more of a one versus one or like a Dev Tips bake off. So here's what's going to happen. I designed a fun little splash page with a modal and I gave that design to Andrew who filmed himself coding it all up. And I coded it up myself and we're going to watch those two videos right now at about 30x speed. We're going to speed it up real fast. And then we'll discuss a few things. So we'll focus on what we did the same, we'll look at what we did differently, and then we'll make a few recommendations and talk about what we've learned. But first, let's meet Andrew. All right, everyone, say hello to Andrew Marks. Andrew, hi, how are you doing today? Pretty good, how are you? I'm doing really good. It's, it's really early in the morning. What is it, uh, 3 o'clock in the morning for us? It is three o'clock in the morning. Yes. So you, uh, just as a side note, you also are a polyphasic sleeper. I am. Yeah. And you total is, is it four hours a day? Uh, it's two hours a day right now. Actually. You sleep two hours a day. That's so insane. Okay. So I'm doing four and I'm like, I'm not worthy. <laughs> so, so how long have you been doing web development? Um, about four years at this point. Mm -hmm. But you currently are not doing webs professionally. Webs, you're doing uh, you're doing app development. Is that right? I am. I am. I've That's spent awesome. about the last year and a half or so doing app development. So I've known you for just a little bit now, and in fact, the the I met you uh, because you're a patron of Dev Tips. I am. Yeah. Well, everybody who's watching this and all the other patrons, we're all really excited to have you, and uh, so I appreciate that. Now, uh, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be looking at the the work that we we did together, and and this is this is an interesting relationship that you and I have. We've shared. I was looking earlier today. We have shared about fifty emails so far, <laughs> going back and forth, that's and, it. and setting up. Yeah, that's it. That's all. Um, and setting up this this project and planning it out. Like, what do you think is a good idea? Should we do this? How are we going to handle this thing? And and so I, I've made this design and shared it with you. And we've we've both taken, uh, you know, recorded our efforts in building it separately. And so what we're going to do right now is we're going to cut to both of us, uh, kind of like a, I'm going to speed it up really fast and we're going to show both of them at the same time. And then after that, we're going to come back and talk about what we did the same overall and what kind of tactics we did differently and then maybe like make some recommendations for the for the folks at home watching and also by the way uh, for you everyone watching this you can get both of these videos in their full length uh, kind of uh, original speed uh, on the channel as well so there's there's about well, like three hours of content for you today uh, on dev tips so it's a really exciting day for us and uh, and it's all thanks to Andrew so uh, without further ado let's do the cut <laughs>
Cool, that was fun. Welcome back. So, Andrew, let's talk about what we did uh, the same and what we did differently. Let's start with the same. Did you, like, what, what, what feeling did you get? Um, like, when I was watching yours, I, I, I kind of like, it was a little bit of deja vu. Um, for example, I noticed that, you know, we would use, like, the exact same variables and that we both, like, we both have a hard time naming things. That was, those were two things that I picked up on. Uh, anything else that you picked up on that we did, like, the exact same that was kind of fun and surprising? Um, as far as specific things, like the background, we both, you know, made it full size with like the, the cover property. Mm -hmm. That's a favorite of mine. And then the first time I actually put it together, cause I actually put this together twice. Mm. Um, the first time I did it, uh, I built it basically entirely using Flexbox, which is what you did this time. Yeah. Um, so I, I thought that was kind of interesting. So on your second I didn't time, do that, why did you choose the second time? Um, I don't know. It's just what I was thinking about at the time. Oh, uh, it's interesting that you build so. it differently the second time because you think like it's a it's a dry run, so I'll do it the same, like you know, like practice or whatever. That's interesting. I noticed that we use the same, uh, you know, this the same fade in effect for the modal. Um, I didn't like did. in my design. I didn't prescribe any like animation or anything. I was just like, here's what the modal looks like. Here's what the splash looks like, and we both end up doing like a fade in and slide down at the same time. That was interesting. We both, uh, for like the, the popover effect, we both used like pointer events and like opacity mm -hmm. and, and display properties to like make it pop in instead of like moving it from off screen to on screen or something like that. Right, yeah, that's another technique. That's cool. I like the, I like the opacity. It's easier to like understand where it's at, you know? I don't know, it's just my thing. Now we're gonna go into the part that I think is like probably the most interesting is what did we do differently and kind of why? And, and after we discuss this, we can make, you know, like some, maybe we may make some recommendations or just kind of admit that there's a million ways to do anything. But, um, so let, let's talk about some points we did differently. What did you notice? Um, so one of the things that we did differently um, is I didn't include the hover over the call to action transition. Mm. Um, right. Because when I was looking at your Photoshop document, I didn't actually have any clue what that extra layer was for. I didn't know you wanted that to be like a fade in. Um, and because oh. we hadn't like spoken about it, yeah, um, I didn't know what that was supposed to be for. So I just assumed you were trying out different different layouts or something. No, your assumption was correct, um, actually. Uh, I was trying out different different color patterns. And, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I thought mm -hmm. you were doing. And then um, uh, when I did the hover, I was just like, well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and in fact, I forgot that I had tried that reverse. Oh, that's interesting. What did you notice we did? Oh, um, well, one thing I did no I noticed, which is a big deal, is that uh, you use SCSS, and I'm a SAS guy, so we got that going uh, on. Yeah, we got that going on. That interplay there. Our tools were completely different. Yeah, um, I used Internet Explorer and Visual Studio. Right. On Windows, mm -hmm. you use Atom and. From. Mm -hmm. And you so, also used M along with, and I used Jade. I did. Exactly. See? Everything we're, was different. In that we're way. not peas in a pod. <laughs> <laughs> so it's cool that, like, you know, uh, developer a developer environment aside, like, you can get, you know, very similar results. We accomplish basically the same thing. Yeah. And it's all down to what you're comfortable with. Like, I like the fact that even though, like, you're a patron of DevTips and you watch DevTips and, like, like, we have this, you know, thing going on, you know, you're not taking what I say for gospel. So when I'm making a video and I'm using Jade, you're using whatever the heck you feel like to make, you know, to make it work for yourself. And I think that's really cool. Uh, other things right. I noticed were, um, oh, so you used very specific dimensions for all of your things, where mine was mostly like, 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 like I put bounding, like this will be max width. I don't want it to go any wider than this, but generally like that kind of, that kind of thing. That's one of the things that I probably wouldn't have done that way if I was thinking about like com taking that project and, and taking it all the way to a solution um, because I would have you know had to think about making it responsive which is something I definitely didn't do and that's something you did do. Oh yes that's right. Mine, mine if your browser is less than 600 pixels wide it just doesn't work <laughs> um, <laughs> which is, isn't great obviously yeah. and I, I would have done some things differently. Yeah. And I think that's probably why mine's longer. Not, yeah. Like yeah, it just, that, it just yeah, takes longer time. Power yeah, it just takes more yeah. time. Um, one thing that I really liked what you did in your uh, in your JavaScript is that you used 
uh, specific functions for uh, the results of your of your clicks. So like you would say uh, on click and then you would have a function right there and then you would abstract that function later because you also did if you click on the X to close for example but also if you click anywhere that's not the modal it would close as well where mine is like you can only click on the X because I was very I was like very specific not abstract about where I put the function so I, I like I really like that technique that's pretty cool um, I also noticed that you use the jQuery on method instead of the click like I use. So uh, why did you use on? Um, is that a normal thing so for you? Most, and like, what are the benefits of on uh, versus click? So basically, if you do like on and then click, you can add more effects. Like, like on the next line, you could have like a key press event, and on the next line, you'd have like a blur event or something like that. So you can uh, with the, with the on method, you can actually chain different events into oh. one section. And so like oftentimes if I'm developing something, I'll have more than one event that will need to be handled um, on one element. And so I just kind of have gotten used to using That's on. Smart, man. And then the last thing is I noticed that I think that I made a ton more mistakes. <laughs> like I was tripping over myself way more than you were. So that's cool for you. That was my second time making it. Oh, so yeah, that makes sense. I had that advantage. Right. Too. But you made it totally different the second time. So I don't know if that totally applies. It wasn't, complete, it wasn't completely yeah. different. Um, a lot of it was the same. Like getting the background cover thing to work. Um, mm -hmm. I struggled with that for a few minutes like you did as well the first time. Oh, yeah. Uh, cool. But then the second time I knew exactly what to type. What's, so. your, what's your opinion as a... As a an audience member, do you do you find it frustrating when you when I when I leave in the parts like in when I'm editing when I'm like fumbling around? Do you do you uh, find it frustrating or do you appreciate that stuff? I'm just curious. Um, I appreciate it if it's not like a ridiculous amount of time. Like at some point, you just need to cut it off and, and move on. Um, but yeah. like the video that you put in, that was fine. Oh, okay, cool. I was just curious, just for my own edification. So. Um, Last thing I want to talk about is a few things I learned from your um, from your video. I did not know that you could do RGBA and then stick a variable in there and then turn the opacity down like that. I was using um, SAS functions, I think uh, fade out or opacify and things like that. And you just threw it in the RGBA, which is like a lot easier for me to remember. That's cool. I didn't know you could do that. But another thing that you explained really well is um, the uh, the pointer events. And how that like like what you're using that for? I think I think I use the same technique in my video, but my my explanation was like a little bit more cloudy than yours. So I think like even though you know we kind of use a lot of the same things and some some things different, of course. I think uh, watching both of the videos and watching like how we thought about what we're doing is also really interesting, even though the, what we're actually doing was the same. Well, I learned a couple things from you. Um, the first thing is that Flexbox is pretty cool. Um, I didn't use it for quite that much when I used it the uh -huh. first time, but uh, I, I didn't use it for like everything, whereas you, if something wasn't aligned properly, it immediately got display flex, and then you adjusted yeah. things that way. For the I'm not part. sure how I feel um, about that. I feel like every time I ever use Flexbox once, the whole thing turns into flexbox. I feel like it's like a. I feel like it's like a rabbit hole that you fall down or something. Um, when you started your JavaScript file, you actually made like a, a short little outline, even though it was pretty basic, with what you were actually going to do in that file. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I think you should do. People should do more of. Me especially. Mm -hmm. Like I don't plan it out at all, and I just start typing, uh, and then get lost in it because I don't know like if I had already done something or if I need to still do something. Yeah. That was a trick I taught myself when I first started learning JavaScript. Was I would just always just get like really confused, uh, confused with all that. Because like right. uh, markup in, in CSS is not like it's not like logical. Like you have to take steps to find things. And JavaScript is very much like you've, it's actually running a program. So um, so that was really helpful for me, uh, outlining the the concept and, and the outputs that I want first, and then filling them in. And then one other thing that you did um, that I thought was just kind of great and I want to mention is that when you were going with that like call to action hover effect where the, the colors swap basically, um, once you saw it working you're like it's not that great but you can you just kept it there. Um, you actually said 
uh, it's not that great, but I'm going to keep it or something like that. And I thought that was you liked great. it. <laughs> you just, I did. It was, it worked out. Like it, it looked fine. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, okay. I just like in the design process that you said that. Cool. Well, that's all I got for uh, our similar similarities and differences in my lessons. Let's make some recommendations for the people at home. If they're going to recreate this project, having uh, having done it now twice and having seen me do it, um, what would you do differently in yours? I would have probably started with a more responsive uh, like layout and markup, and I would have built my initial like stylings to be more responsive. Um, I would have set text heights to be, you know, fixed, but then everything else to be relative to that, whereas everything in my video was basically just, you know, pixel dimensions, and I was just measuring in Photoshop and, and just pasting them in, which isn't a great, great uh, thing for responsiveness. Right. Um, so I would, I would definitely make it a more responsive design. I, I, I really like the, uh, the accessibility of your modal, like especially the closing of it. So I, I think I would have, like, spent a little bit more time in my JavaScript. My, my JavaScript was basically, turn this class on or off. That's kind of all it was. So I, I would have spent yeah, more time yeah. there. I like, I like the way you did that. All right, well, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much, Andrew, for joining us uh, here on DevTips and for being a DevTips patron. If you are interested in being a patron of DevTips and want to join Andrew in doing such, you can visit patreon.com slash DevTips and uh, check out what we got going on there. And in the meantime, Andrew, would you please say, keep on hacking? Keep on hacking. Thanks for watching this video. Once again, I'd like to thank Andrew and all of the other patrons who make these videos possible for you to watch here on YouTube. Uh, this is a list of all of those wonderful patrons. And if you have any questions about what is a patron and what am I talking about, please check out patreon.com slash devtips for more information on that. And if this is your first time watching a video on devtips, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. So we'll see you next week.